cleaning at home can be simple, smart and automated. Roborox 2022 portfolio demonstrates this better than ever, and here's a pick for everyone, from a budget-oriented basic robot vacuum up to a fully independent, self-emptying and using a self-wash field dock monster robot vacuum. Let's inspect! Hi, welcome, good to meet you, Michael, my name. I really enjoy trying out new tech and showing it to you here on the channel and today's video is going to be a bit different to the usual thorough inspections that I publish on the channel because it's going to be more like a sneak peek onto what I'm preparing for you in the next few weeks, namely testing and trying new members from the new portfolios that Roborock are providing to us now in 2022. And before I go any further, a disclaimer, I'm a Roborock fan, you know, because of what they produce, of the awesome ratio between design, quality features and price. And although I like them quite a lot, well, I need to underline this video is not sponsored by Roborock. And everything I'm going to say about these devices in this episode are my own thoughts based on my own experience. I think I know very well Roborock's portfolio because I've been using the S5 for more than four years without any problem. And again, for the record, after more than 300 cleaning cycles, the battery is still as good as on day one, and the only expenses that I've had are related to changing the HEPA filters. Costs around 10 bucks every three months. Fast forward to how things evolve now in 2022, and we can already distinguish three different product lines. Uh, Roborock have presented all of that on CES 2022. First of all, we have the E-Series, which are the affordable balance between quality features and price. Then we have the Q-Series, which are, at least in my opinion, the sweet spot, because they offer the great, awesome quality and performance that you know from the previous generations at a rather good mid-range price. And the S-Series, we now have the S7 Max-V, which is going to be their flagship in the premium segment, obviously, a bit more expensive than the rest. In this video, I'm going to address their main differences and also highlight the top features so that you feel comfortable when choosing your next Roborock vacuum. And although the devices that we're going to talk about are coming over from Roborock, I think this video is going to still be very relevant about picking a new robot vacuum from any other brand. Let's begin with the most affordable from this portfolio, E4 and E5, which are Roborock's entry-level models, but please do not underestimate their capabilities. If you think that they are too basic and not worth considering, let me mention that they also can be controlled via smartphone app and provide decent suction power and even have the possibility for wet mopping. But corners have been cut, probably a lot of them. Here we can find some good technologies represented in their budget-friendliest form with a special Roborock premium and innovative treatment. I'm showing you the unpacking of E5. This one costs around 220 euro or 250 dollars in my region. This definitely is a fair price for the so many great features, like 2500 pascal suction power, a large 640ml dustbin, a 180ml water tank, up to 200 minutes operation time per charge, a mac base remote control, possibility for integration with home assistance and even internal navigation. Apparently, we can notice some features that up until recently have been only accessible for higher-end robots, so it's good to see that they're present here, albeit part of the slim lines or the budget-friendliest portfolio. Interesting is the navigation. It's based on a gyroscope inside and also the small optical sensor here on the front, unlike what other more expensive models would have here at the top, which is the LiDAR sensor. So here we don't have it, it's just the small optical sensor. And at the bottom here, we have the optic eye sensor. So not as precise as LiDAR system, but still methodically. And this allows the robot to be very effective about cleaning and that drastically reduces the time, especially as compared to the robots which operate at the mode uh, bump and run. I guess that's the only one which can cause an accident with dog poo or something like that. The suction power is good enough to cover the most common scenarios and small pieces of dirt like bread, rice grains and similar are lifted without any problems. Pet hair as well. Most remarkable is perhaps the dustbin, 640 milliliters, which is close to 30% more than the average industry standard. 
I usually follow a very simple rule when I jump into a new line of technology. Uh, purchase the entry-level moto, use it for a while, define which are the features and the functions that matter to me the most, and then I go ahead and purchase something which matches my using style a bit better. So in this case, E5 being an entry-level moto, I think it's still very capable and it packs some of the features which until recently were only included with the S-Line, the lot more expensive S-Line. So it's really nice Rob Rock giving us this kind of opportunity. But if you want to go mid-range or premium mid-range, I think you're going to like the Q product line. Yes, on CES 2022, Roborock have announced the Q series and the first member, Q5, is going to be exclusively released in the US region only. I do hope it's going to be rolled out globally sooner or later. The Q series are perfect balance between smart features, performance and price. I think out of all the contenders, they offer the best value ratio. I currently am testing the Q5 Plus, where we have the Q5 Robot and the Auto Emptying Station, which Roborock call Auto Emptying Dock Pure. Besides the Q5 model, Roborock are also launching the Q7 and Q7 Max, both of which are going to appear later this year, packing greater section power, a bit more features and web mopping, because the Q5, as you can notice, it supports only dry cleaning. It's the budget friendliest out of this mid-range portfolio, starting at $430 and together with um, the dock, it's going to cost around $630. Now there is a bit of good news here, because if you decide to later on buy the Q7 or the Q7 Max, you can just swap the robot vacuum and keep the station, which is very thoughtful of Roborock. With the Q-Line, you're going to notice increase of the section power starting from 2700 pascals for Q5, going up to the remarkable 4200 pascal for the Q7 Max. The Q5 model is equipped with a floating main brush. There also is a lot greater IQ with this robot as compared to the E-Series. And this is the enclosing where the LDS module is placed. Thanks to the laser beams, it scans nearby objects and creates a lot more precise map. Here we talk about one of the algorithms in the industry with the highest possible precision, allowing not only regular mapping, as it used to be with the S5 series, but also the recently integrated three-dimensional scanning. Preserving multi-floor maps is possible too, as well as customizing the cleaning habits. So you can set some routines, areas to be cleaned depending on the scenario, like after meal cleaning or kitchen area cleaning. If you have pets at home, the Q series are going to be invaluable. Furthermore, you can buy the entirely rubber made main brush to use in the Q5, which is more durable and could avoid hair tangling. The Q5 that I test here is only capable of dry cleaning and it does it in a great way. If you don't need the mopping function and already have the older S5 or S5 Max, it feels like an upgrade thanks to the increased suction power, the more capable mapping algorithm and the compatibility with Auto Empty Dock Pure. If wet mopping is a priority and you want to stay with the Q-Series segment, wait for the Q7 and Q7 Max, which will offer a few more features and increased suction power. Prime time. This is the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. Well, it's a bit longer than the expected name. This stands for Vision and it has something to do with the stack that they've placed on the front. There's the LED, which can illuminate if it's too dark. And of course, a camera, which besides the sensors for 3D recognition and mapping, can also show you in real time what's happening in front of your robot vacuum. The uh, Ultra Edition is actually a combination between the Roborock S7 Max V and the empty wash field dock, which is different to last year's docking station, which can only suck the dust and the debris out of the robot, while this year with this empty wash field dock, it can not only capture all the dust from the dust box, but also wash the entire mop. And I think sounds as interesting as the robot vacuum itself is. This dock allows the robot to automatically clean, then refill its own mop and even wash it. So you can run the cleaning process at your home entirely remotely, including mopping. 
The Robot, on the other hand, is a masterpiece. It has the remarkable 5100 Pascal section power, more than twice the capacity of the E series and most other standard robot vacuums, and just hear about the rest of the features. Sonic mopping, advanced LDS, the new Reactive AI 2.0 obstacle avoidance, ultrasonic carpet recognition and automatic mop lifting, camera on the front with LED so that it can illuminate and recognize pieces of dirt, three-dimensional mapping, child lock function and the integration with smart home assistants as it is with the other models. The navigation is perhaps the best we've seen in a robot vacuum so far, highly advanced laser navigation system capable of mapping your home to 2 cm accuracy for more effective cleaning. In terms of performance, there's nothing better I've seen so far. I can clearly notice a big difference between the way it handles different surfaces compared to the rest. On a high carpet, the robot feels exactly as comfortable as it feels on hard floors. Mopping is backed by Roborock's patented Sonic technology, which pretty much scrubs spots of dirt and is a lot more effective than other industry algorithms. This is why the module itself weighs a little more than the usual. As you can imagine, price-wise, this whole thing goes above 1000 bucks if you're looking to get the Ultra and the Plus dogs. The robot itself is around 860. Unfortunately, there is no compatibility between the S and the Q lines when it comes to interoperability of the docks. In the end, before someone blames me that this is sounding more like an ad, no, no, it's more of a sneak peek of what I'm gonna do in the next few weeks, and I'm still thinking whether I should publish a video for each one of these three models and which one should be the first. And also a very good opportunity to ask you which are the features that you want me to try out. So if there's something specific, shoot in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. Ah, uh, to give a drawback, the thing I'm really sorry about, it's the fact that it's black only. Yeah, that's the only color that are currently launching. Um, I, I so much miss the S line with the white color and that's what I fell in love in the first place when I got my first Roborock S5. I find this expansion of Roborock's portfolio to make perfect sense because with all the price bumps that we see this year, they enable customers with lower budget to still get access to value products designed by a premium brand. So this is the complete walkthrough of Roborock's 2022 portfolio or at least the devices that have released up until now and I really hope it makes sense and I've tried to highlight the most important features that you can associate with their entry-level, mid-range and high-end S series. It's pretty fun. So if you want to go entry-level and get to know the product or probably take advantage of its most valuable features, the E series are a perfect choice. Then the Q, which is, as I mentioned at the start, probably the sweet spot offering very decent section power, but also some of the great advanced three-dimensional mapping and, and all the other good features. And of course, the S7 Max V, which in my opinion is the standard, that's, that's the golden standard of 2022. That's been it. I hope it's been useful and thank you very much for watching this video until the end. For any questions, of course, as usual, I'm going to be sticking around in the comment section below the video, so don't forget to take a look there. And links to all the products, as usual, placed in the video description. I'm Michael, it's been such a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye!